let's take a look now as to how we're going to use the different market research that we're doing and how we use that secondary research. A lot of times you want to look at the demand, how we're going to qualify your future market. What is it going to be like? You start paying attention to how markets shift rapidly. You're going to see some changes in it just in a matter often of a few months. Especially if you're in the fashion industry, you'll see changes in color. If you're in even the car industry, you'll see people coming out with cars designed for a specific gender. There are men cars and women cars, and they're designed to appeal to that specific market. Of course, you'll have some crossover between those, but you'll see different aspects of color, different styles on the inside. You'll also see just about every aspect that there'll be differentiation as to what target market they're after. So look on the future market, look where they're going in times to come. Look on the present sales level, the market share, look on the product life cycle. Those are all issues that are out there. Look as to what you have as a strength in your service sector, in your product line. Look also in the outside, do some product actually scanning that's out there. What is changing out there in the sociographic and the cultural aspect of it? Pay attention to the economy. If it's expanding, okay, and it's a, it's a market out there, Pay attention, making certain that you're not a single product or a single service. Maybe you need to expand your product line, maybe expand your services that you provide. Look at your competitors out there. The competitors don't stay stagnant. If they do, your life is good, but that doesn't mean you can stay stagnant. Make certain that you're always researching, trying to make certain you pay attention to the largest number of aspects out there for your business. You know, a lot of times you look at some of the data that says, all oh, three out of five businesses fail in five years. That number simply isn't true. You'll see people that start a business and the business is doing okay. Let me use an example. They go into the tire business and they find the tire business is very competitive, but the wheel business is not. So they may see them formulate entirely the business from tires into wheels. They change the name of their company. They change the organization and these are specializing in wheels. They find a better market when the one they initially went into. So you'll see changes like that. That's because they're paying attention to the, the trend as to what's out there. Now the wheel over here, we're going from chrome wheels to black wheels. That's a big market change. So over here, boom, all of a sudden, now they can make more money doing this than selling the tires. Leave the tires for the highly competitive, but the wheels, oh no, I got my niche market over here. Even food, you'll see people going into the aspect of, I'm going to go into the baked goods. Well, all of a sudden they pay attention to, I have a, a, a huge Indian population demographic, and, and the, especially the, part of the religious faith in the Hindu world is they don't have eggs in their, in their, in their bread. So therefore, if I focus in on that teeny tiny market segment, and by the way, if you do, you'll make a killing if you pay attention to those teeny tiny cultural variations because you'll get a loyal following. It's all about business when it comes down to trend spotting, see what's out there, see what niche market you can capture in your business and serve that market to the best of your ability and you'll get some fabulous following. Buyer behavior, buyer patterns, buyer purchase frequency, how often do they buy it? If you can sit down and get them to buy this over here, is there another product that's related to that you can bundle with that? Or maybe an upgrade product of the same thing. Look at the, how, how it's going to be used out there for advertising. Secondary data, here's the positive. Yes, it saves time and money on target. Okay, aids in determining the direction of your primary data. We'll talk about primary data in a future week. Okay, and pins point the kind of people to approach and it serves and the basis to comparison of other data. Some of the problems, you may not have adequate detail. It may not be on target with the research problem. Always keep in mind what, what are you trying to research? What problem is your research focused on? And then sometimes since it's not designed for your particular business, you may get off target because of the fact it's general population nature instead of your specific group that you're looking at. Some of the caveats, the quality varies in some of this. You have to be careful. You have people out there and, and they, they may have a doctor behind their name, but they're paid for by somebody else. You, you can't depend upon green energy. With some, it, it's subsidized by the oil industry. You have issues like that. So pay attention to the data. International data is less common and you have a lot of variation in the quality and the interpretation of it. And also, does it really address what you're looking for? 
who sponsored it, motives do matter, who conducted it, pay attention to who's out there, if they have a good reputation, and if they have earned it. Um, who participated in the study? Is it a good or bad sample? Scrutinize everything. Remember, it's the obtained sample that really matters. How was it done? If you're involved in research a lot, you're going to look as to the methodology as to how they went about doing that. Was it a qualitative or quantitative method? This depends how it's out there. And then proxies are problematic. You, you don't want to pay, you don't want to pay attention to somebody substituting their needs over the top of yours. Also, the aspect of the answer categories are often not standard. Here's the simple iron truth of using secondary data. All data is subject to error. Sometimes even the data you gather, pay attention to what you're doing, pay attention to what you're looking at, because sometimes even the best of intentions can just get a little bit off track. Data from multiple sources are more trustworthy. If you have data set over here and you can match it with somebody else over here, you have comparable standards. All of a sudden now, you're really focusing in as to this is relevant data for you. Data that departs from the norm are suspect. Now, sometimes at the departure of norm, you might find leads to a niche market that has not been discovered. There's another class we teach called the, the, the really the business models. Long tail focuses on that teeny tiny niche marketing. So, so that being said, pay attention to the norms, but also those outliers, the things that seem to be odd. Usually they are odd and maybe it's an inappropriate item for you to collect except maybe that's a trail that other people have ignored. And maybe if you pursue that teeny tiny niche, you can sit down and become fabulously wealthy, okay, in the process of focusing in on that one particular area. Always start a project by asking, what secondary data is available? Because it's cheap and it's easy to get. Never take the secondary data at face value. You always have to dig a little bit deeper because of the fact it may not apply to you, even though it looks like it might when the first first glance. And sometimes you wanna have the aspect of the long-term investment in market intelligence that you always have this coming forward on a regular basis, especially if you find something really good. But pay attention to the vision and the commitment. Secondary data can save a lot of money on research and it keeps you at the forefront of your industry if it applies. Ask if it applies to your exact scenario but always have that little bit of a grain of salt and the hesitation before fully accepting everything that is pertinent to what you have in mind for your research. Take care.